This is David Strauss, and I'm interviewing my grandfather, James Bassano. How about thank you for agreeing to do this? I'm happy to do it, Dave. Um, so you were born in 1946, the boomer generation. What was it like growing up back then? Well, growing up back then, um, I grew up in a neighborhood of all relatives, eight families, on one, on just a private road, and it was where the children would be, have their breakfast and then go out, and they were all cousins and relations, or their friends that would come over, and we would spend our uh, days in the neighborhood. We had a woods there, and we could run and do whatever we want. It's not like as restricted as it is today for the kids. And there was sledding, and there was uh, bike riding, and you know, on occasion we'd take a trip and go fishing, and you know, building forts. It was stuff we, you know, you went out and made your own uh, entertainment. Baseball was everybody just getting together and playing baseball. It wasn't organized like uh, they do today. Everybody is, all the social things with them kids is all organized. Where back then it was, uh, you made your own fun, you know. Mm -hmm. And we would get into some mischief and, you know, that was probably the, the more fun part of it, you know, ringing doorbells at night, running around and getting, you know, playing tricks on people and stuff. But basically the kids were all like, you were happy to get out in the morning and go play. And the summers were like forever, you know, time like took forever. The days was longer and stuff like that. And, and it was a great childhood. It was a good time. And what was your family like growing up? My family was, uh, I came from uh, 11 children, six boys and five girls. And I was the, uh, my sister Pat was older than me and I was the second. And uh, the rest were younger siblings. And uh, my childhood growing up with them was uh, take care of the kids. We always had a baby in the family every other year or every, <laughs> it was like we were always having a, uh, an extension to the family every year. And uh, my mom's uncle lived with us who took care of her when she was uh, young. And um, we always had different people come into our house. Uh, kids, you know, each, everybody's friend would come to the house and it was like a social thing and, and getting along and stuff like that. And the Christmases were like crazy and dinners, dinners, uh, when we got to be a full family, there was 15 people in the house and towards the end there. And we actually ate in shifts. The children would eat first. We had a, a huge table and after that, the adults would sit down and eat because there was 15 people to sit down and eat. And we did a lot of dishes and clean up, you know, I had to do dishes. My favorite thing was to wash the dishes instead of driving. And basically, it was good, you know. We had a good family. And uh, what was school like back then? School... <laughs> School was, uh, you know, you went in and it wasn't like today. I went to a Catholic school and uh, when you went in, you had a, a jacket on and a tie and and there was a dress code like like that and uh, you didn't talk in class. You went in, sat down, the teacher would teach and it was like uh, you listened to that teacher pretty well. It wasn't a it was it wasn't as as free as today where the kids can move around and uh, right. you know like that but it was um, I wasn't particularly fond of school I mean I pretty you know I, I all through school and even in through the high school uh, I played some football 
I, that I really enjoyed. Matter of fact, that was the, probably the best thing I enjoyed out of going to school. And uh, I never, I never was much for my education because uh, I came. From, my father was a, a contractor, a builder, and I always assumed and was geared that I was going to be uh, working for him and, and like that. And uh, that's what I did do. When I was nine years old, I started. I would go to work for my father for ten dollars a week. Which comes to twenty five. I think it's twenty five cents. Uh, no, twenty five cents an hour, and uh, and and uh, you know, and and then in the summertime I would do that, and then I was learn how to actually do my. I actually was finishing concrete. 12 years old and I had to do that out of a necessity some guys didn't show up and I had to jump in with the guys and I took to it right away and I had to do that forever concrete work you, you know you need a concrete guy because I knew how to do it I, I went up with that job and uh, it was good so then after high school, you didn't go to college or trade school, you worked with your father? I worked with my father. After high school, because I, I, I hung around with him so much, I knew uh, I, I actually built two houses in the summer that I got out of high school. And uh, one was for my aunt, and one, one was for me to sell. Um, and uh, I built the, I knew how to build that from the ground up. So I did them two on my own, and um, I didn't. I didn't need to. The only other, the only jobs I ever had in my life, other than working for, with the father or or my own, was uh, a couple carpenters I worked for, a couple carpenter outfits to fill in spaces, and I worked in a bakery for uh, a winter because I we got laid off and. And I knew that I would never, I had to be outside working in construction. It just wasn't for me anything else. So, and, uh, how'd you come to run your own business? Uh, I always had a pickup truck with four wheel drive and then I, I had a snow plow. And I started plowing for uh, going out on my own trying to get contracts, which uh, eventually, I just worked for a company that did snow plowing. And uh, after ex after about three or four years doing that, I ran into a, 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 a friend who said who said he plowed for somebody, and me and him decided to to go in and you know do our own work, you know pick up a couple jobs and do our own work. And uh, it led to us doing banks around in uh, Norristown, the uh, Upper Marion area, and, and some businesses, some uh, some lodges and stuff like that, and some uh, buildings. And it led into where Continental Bank was in the city, and we started doing, we did 13 of their banks down there. And then Continental, I think, turned into First Union. And by that time, we were doing all the banks in Philadelphia. Right. We had a big, that's when we became real big, plus other places we were doing. And then the fellow I was partners with, he went into hardware and stuff like that. And uh, I brought my brother Joe in as a partner. And we've been, we're still doing snow plowing today. The only difference is, it's our company, but our sons are out there doing doing it for us. You know, they're handling the companies. So that's how we uh, I became in to do that. Plus, that led us into uh, we inv I invested the snow money into real estate and stuff like that, and we fix up the places and uh, rent them out. That's where I would get my income. 
know to do that but from the snow from the snow business. The house we're in right now, you built it yourself, right? Yes. What made you decide to build your own home? Well, I lived in my the first house we built. I was in it for 13 years, and uh, the neighborhood where I grew up in, where my father lived, there was uh, two building lots next to where where he, you know, where my father's place was, and uh, he had he had had them purchased, and he asked my sister, my older sister, who's building the house there needed a house built there for herself to move there. And uh, when she said that, he goes, would you be interested in having that lot? And I said, sure, I'd like to come back and live up there. And uh, that's what made me build the house here. It took me a couple years to build it on the side, but uh, we built it and then, you know, it was an opportunity to build a bigger house so we did it. And was there anything particularly difficult about building your own house? No. Other than uh, having the time to do it on the weekends and whenever I could fit it in. And uh, funding it, I would uh, earn money and then I would put it into the material and then do the house and stuff like that. So that was it. And I'm guessing working in construction made the job a lot more doable than it would have been otherwise. Yeah, construction gave me the, the, the knowledge of what it was and you know how to lay it out and what to do. And the house I laid it out to what was comfortable for me, uh, what I wanted in it, and uh, the stuff that I didn't want to be, uh, you know, I just downsized on certain things. And, other things I made more suit my needs, you know, because we do have, in the first house we built, I had the, the lower level of the house set up for uh, family things, Christmas parties and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, from her side, from my, my wife's side, and uh, it was always a big group of people, plus I came from a big family, so when we built this house, we built an extra large kitchen extra large area for these things and we've been having them ever since you know so the house is designed for the hold the people well, it's definitely done that very well so it suited me well and uh, how did you meet your wife i met my wife in 11th grade she was from upper marion high school i was from bishop Kennedy. And uh, a, a friend of mine, this girl named Eileen, was, uh, we were having a party with my cousins and then we were going to have a party to get together. And uh, actually she was trying to, uh, Eileen was trying to introduce me to Ka uh, my Kathy's sister, Marielle. And uh, when we had the, the thing, uh, Kathy came, when Kathy came in, she walked right up to me and we talked the, the whole night and that was it. And I didn't know, you know, I knew I liked her. I mean, she was a very nice looking girl and stuff. And, uh, and I didn't think anything of it. Actually, I thought it, her name was Mary Ellen because that's what her sister's name was. Because I was the brightest tack in the, in the room, you know. And, uh, here the Eileen says, "Yeah, she went. You know, do you want to want to go out with her or this and that?" And I says, "Yeah, sure." And, and uh, that was it. We've been together ever since. You know, we got a uh, that senior year. We dated all through our senior year, and then uh, when we got out of that, we got engaged for Christmas after we graduated and in uh, May 22nd is when we got married so we got we were 18 when we got married and um, and two months from now 
we'll be married 50 years. Wow. So I guess I'm going to keep her for a while. <laughs> now, she gave me a good life. She gave me great kids. We have great grandkids. I mean, I'm very, you know, I've, I've had a, a great life. And uh, she's the reason, she's a big reason why it was a great life. She gave me some great kids, and she's she's a good mother. Keeps the family together. You know, she's in contact with them. In the morning, she contacts all the kids. After dinner, they all con have to call in, and they're you know that's what keeps us close. And she's the core of it. And, uh, what was it like raising your kids? I always like to have kids around. I uh, I just I just love being with kids, you know, and uh, playing with them and getting into their heads and and uh, little babies. I can almost tell how they would you know, from having all the brothers and sisters and take care of. I could almost tell their temperament by the the sound of what they're crying or or, or what they need and. You know, and uh, little babies are, uh, their mind is so brilliant, which I like about them. Everybody thinks they do nothing but sit there and do nothing when they're small. But what it is is their minds are so open and they're taking in so much knowledge at one time. You know, I learned some things like when a baby's crying and they put, the women put them on their shoulder and pat them and they're facing that way to, sh to make that baby calm and and when they're struggling back there, you just turn them around and hold them completely forward so that they're looking at what's going on around them. If they're part of the conversation and they calm right down. What it is is they're trying to, you know, maybe I'm getting into too much detail, but I find that uh, the babies want to be part of the thing. They don't want to be held away where they can't see and stuff like that. So, maybe I'm rambling on too much yeah. about certain things. So, what else? <laughs> um, any particularly interesting experiences with your own children when they were growing up? Did they have any particular trouble or? Uh, not really. I mean, my, you know, other than going near the road when they shouldn't or something like that, but basically the kids, you know, were good. I never really restricted them from doing anything because they always knew, uh, you know, what, you know, what was in the bounds of what they could do and not do. And, and, yeah, I really had no trouble with them. Of course, their mother uh, was, uh, was always on top of them, you know, yeah. and, uh, I really just had good times with the kids, playing with them and doing different things and stuff like that. So they were a pleasure to me. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Papa. Okay, David, you're one of my pleasures in life. Thank you, that means a lot. <laughs> yeah, you're a good man. Thank you. <laughs>